In this video, I'm going to show some of the features of TarSplit and how it's used with the latest integration with Docker 1.8. As of Docker 1.8, uh, TarSplit as a library was included such that the layer data that is brought in from different container images is the archive itself is preserved for content addressability. So here in this demo, let's start off by we're going to create for the sake of um, having a new, completely new tar archive that's brought into the layer and brought back out of the layer. I'm going to make a, a container named demo uh, from Fedora latest. Uh, it's pretty arbitrary. It could be anything really. I'm going to export this container image out into a file called demo.tar. Um, also, let's go ahead and make a directory of GoPath and export GoPath. Um, make sure that GoPath is in our system path. Then we're going to make sure we get the latest update of, or up, any updates that are out there for the tar split command itself. This is going to fetch and download the source code for tar split and compile it, and we should have this in our path now. Great. So what we've got here is we've just created this um, container for called demo, and we can remove that now because we don't need that container laying around. But what we've got is a uh, an archive here that is the full file system for this um, runtime. We can do interesting things on it if we had customized and met, built this image ourselves. We, you know, we'd have some way of driving it and saying that this is the actual one that we want. Here's a big cryptographically safe shot 512 digest of this tar archive. And what we're going to do now is we want to Docker import this file system that we've created ourselves, and this is going to be the base layer that we build other stuff up, up on top of. So we're going to import from this demo.tar, and we're going to call the imported image named demo. Um, and I am working on Docker 1.8 here. Um, so we have imported this demo.tar into Docker, and so you can see this now. Docker images demo, this newly imported. Uh, image that's available and can be run. But the interesting thing is that when you actually see that come out the other side, that there is this um, layer that is precisely the same thing. So what's different is that import and export work with just raw file systems. Once Docker has imported a raw file system, it creates some other configurations and things that can be used for that uh, runtime, you know, for that container or image runtime later. When you save or load, you can actually see that additional configuration information. But what also happens is they save and load are applying and unapplying the differences between possible layers in the image. We only uploaded, we only imported one layer. And in Docker Save demo, you will actually see this output of what Docker appended to it. You know, the version that with the time it created it, the uh, uh, container runtime information, if there's any environment variables, you know, what it should execute, stuff like that, and then the name that it gave to it, like demo, uh, demo latest, the tag and name. All right, but the piece that we're interested in here is actually just this layer.tar. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to save this out of Docker. We're going to tar extract to standard out just this one piece of the Docker saved output. And I'm going to pipe that now, which should be just precisely the tar, the root file system that I uploaded. I'm going to pipe that to SHA-512 sum. And you can see now it is precisely the same checksum as what I input as is the same as what Docker is now outputting in here. Even if there were other pieces that possibly have changed M times, A times, C times, stuff like that, it might be a little fuzzy when Docker actually applies that. Uh, information to disk, but what is put back out is reassembled, uh, a reference log is replayed, and you can see that that content is actually the same content that's coming back out the other side.